Hello everybody, I'd like to talk about joints. You can't build an animatable character unless you understand how joints work, so I thought I would teach everyone the basics of joints. Now there are a lot of advanced techniques, but this is the basics, and it works for all kinds of joints, and you can extrapolate it to work on even complex things like shoulders. You just have to understand why things work the way they work. And we're going to start with the concept of a voxel character. So this is a voxel character's leg and uh, then there'd be the hips here, and there'd be another leg, and then there'd be arms up here and a head up there. Now most voxel characters are not animated with any flex. Um, all of their arms and legs and heads are just detached, and they just kind of fly around wherever they want to go, like Raymond. You can, however, you can animate a voxel character. You can animate a voxel character so it looks really good. You just have to understand how. You have to understand the nature of joints, and the nature of compression, and the nature of how all of this works. So let's go ahead and get to it. First things first, we're going to go ahead and show you the bad way. The bad way is to have a leg joint, a leg bone that runs down the middle of the leg, and you just bind it up with automatic weights. And why does this suck? Why is this bad? Well, if we go into pose mode here, and we pose, you can see that this doesn't really look like voxels anymore. You've got tilted edges that get pulled away. We lost a lot of mass in the middle. It doesn't look like voxels. So how do we fix it up? Well, there are two techniques that we're going to have to use here. The first is voxel specific. We're going to have to go into weight paint mode, and we're going to have to make sure that our weight painting is real sharp. Now, how do you create real sharp weight painting? You auto-normalize, and you make sure your strength and your weight are set to 1. And that'll give you very, very sharp weight painting. In this case, we want to make sure that the foot is bound to the bottom of the bottom bone, and we want to make sure that the hip is bound to the top of the top bone. And because we auto-normalized, it will automatically debind it from everything else. And that'll give us a nice sharp set of weights. Now, if we want to go back into pose mode here, you can see that we still lose mass, but these no longer skew. They stay right attached to the bone where they're supposed to be in a voxel character. How can we reduce this skewing? Ah, verts move based on how far they are from the bone that they are affixed to. In this case, these verts are both affixed half to this bone and half to this bone. You can see that in uh, in weight paint mode here. It's green, they're 50-50. And that means that they're going to move about halfway between the bones. But we have a couple of techniques which can change this. The easiest technique by far is to simply move this so that we have a fulcrum vert. Fulcrum verts are along the axis of rotation. They're very, very close to the exact joint. In this case, See, it's exactly aligned with the joint now. Uh, fulcrum verts won't move because they are on the joint. If they're a little bit off the joint, they'll move a tiny bit. If they're a lot off the joint, they move a lot. So if you create a fulcrum vert, that's a stable point. Those will not move. Those will not flex. And if we press tab, you can see that what we've got now is we have no deformation on the outside of the leg. So when we flex, the front, from the front view, everything appears to still be voxely. Now from the back view, we've got compression problems. Let's switch out of weight paint mode just so we don't have any distractions. Here we've got compression problems where it no longer looks like a voxel. Now it's not a matter of the, uh, the length of these faces, it's a matter of them not being square anymore. How do we make them square? Well, it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you exactly how to do it. The easiest way for a voxel character to remain square is to create a crumple zone. And I'm going to show you how to create a crumple zone. Crumple zones are a core part of every kind of joint you're going to create. Um, because, I'll, well, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and create a crumple, crumple zone by hitting K, and then if you hold down Control while you click on these, you'll get ones that are, you'll get positions that are halfway along the edge. And then we'll just connect here and hit Space. And we want to do the same below. So. space. Alright, and now we want to go back into weight paint mode, and we want this upper crumple zone to be 100% upper bone, like this, and we want the lower one to be 100% lower bone, like this. Perfect. Looks good. And what does that earn us? What does that get? Now, when we move, mm, the voxels stay very square. And now if I were to rotate on the y, uh, z axis, of uh, x axis, one of these axes, you can see that this is what it looks like when you're animating it. It literally is a crumple zone. It just crumples inwards. 
Now, personally, I think this is a fine look for a voxel character, and that also allows you to keep the voxels intact, because uh, this nice boundary here is, a, is where the voxels would change over if your top voxel was blue and your bottom voxel was red or whatever. But if you're okay with uh, not having a clean voxel edge, and you don't want that folding look, you can always just delete these two guys. Um, sorry, that's not what I have to do. Verts. Once you've deleted them, you don't have any uh, midline line. You don't have any edge loop running across the middle, and it's no longer a proper voxel, true voxel character. But it is a voxel character in terms of how it looks from the outside, and this method doesn't have the crumple inwards uh, uh, look to it. Instead, it just compresses. See? Now, which one of these you prefer is obviously up to you. Uh, and there are some, you know, halfway between options. But the basic idea here is that we're learning that the back of the joint compresses in. See? So as long as you understand that you're going to be losing a part of, you're going to, faces are going to be compressing in, you can create faces that compress in gracefully. And in the case of a voxel, that means that they compress in mechanically. They just vanish. Um, in the case of a person, however, we need a softer look. So let's go over to our person, the leg. Let's see how this looks. So once again, we can hit Control P, automatic weights, and let's just go ahead and see what this looks like when we move this joint. So this is what we call compression, um, and this is uh, also what we we might call um, either volume loss or mass loss or anything like that. Uh, basically, what happened is we lost a lot of the thickness of the leg. It went away. And this is just the worst. It looks so unrealistic. But we already learned that what we can do is we can drag this so that we've got a fulcrum point, right? We've already learned that. So what happens if we move that fulcrum to the front of the, we create a fulcrum at the front of the leg here and we do it like this? Well, it's not too bad, but we lose a massive amount of uh, mass in the back of the leg. Now we could keep trying to figure out how to create a crumple zone back there, but the simple truth is that we don't want that much crumple zone. That's too much crumple zone. We'd be losing the back half of the leg. In this case, the better option for us is to make these center pieces, uh, there we are, we make these center pieces our fulcrums rather than have the front of the joint our fulcrum, or the front of the leg. So if we move this and make it our fulcrum, then we will get a lot less distortion on the back. I think I moved that forward we'll get a lot less distortion on the back of the leg. See? But we get distortion on the front of the leg. So what are we going to do? Well, I taught you how to create crumple zones, right? Well, the same is true of expansion zones. So if we were to go into this bone, and we were to hit K, and we were to cut across... Oh, looks like the camera decided it wanted to be somewhere awkward. That's fine. Did that work? Did I misclick somewhere? No, it's fine. It worked out. So now we've created an expansion joint, but I think that that's too much space. These are supposed to get larger, so they need to start relatively small. So let's go ahead and bring them down. Oh, uh, Alt, uh, Control, there we are. Bring them down so that they're like this. And like this. We're going to go ahead and adjust this out, and now it looks like we've got a proper knee, doesn't it? So what happens when we decide to move now? Well, this leg still doesn't work quite, quite right. Now, do you want to know why that is? That's because we didn't weight this properly. We had to, we had to manually weight it on our, uh, on our voxel character. We could manually weight it here, but in this case, I think it would be okay if we just went with automatic weighting again, because we move those joints around and the automatic weighting doesn't keep up. Uh, it just gives up, and you've got to uh, to try again. There we go. Now, what happens when we want to move the character? Oh, that's not too bad. Mm, we get some mass loss. We can reduce that mass loss by moving the fulcrum forward. So, if we wanted to have less mass loss in the front, or less mass, less less skewing in the front, we would simply uh, B grab this, move it forward. Oop. Grab this, move it forward like this. And then we would also have to, uh, I guess we should grab the whole thing and move it backwards. You can either adjust the bone or the mesh, whichever one's easier for you at the, any given moment. And now, if we were to grab the bone and rotate it, you can see we don't get nearly as much mass loss there. 
but the back of the leg is still bad. So how do we get the back of the leg to work? Well, we got the crumple zone technology. Let's use it. Oh, I screwed that up. Um, let's deselect everything. I think that's what's killing me here. And then let's crumple on the bottom. Now, let's go ahead and just clear out the armature again and reattach it. And let's pose it. Mm, we're getting some weird folding. I don't think that folding is quite what we want. Well, in the voxel we wanted it to fold, but do you remember what I said? If you don't want it to fold, you can just delete these middle two faces. And now that face will compress instead of fold. Of course, it looks ugly, so let's go ahead and bring these more into alignment with what a leg would look like. There we go, like this. And we'll clear out the armature and redo it. Um, there we go. And now, that's not so bad. For a low poly joint, that's going to be a pretty decent way to approach things. Now one thing I want you to remember is the idea of the fulcrum point, this, this fulcrum joint. Uh, these here do not move, and everything can, can ro re revolve around them. As long as you've got a stable point to work from, you can understand how your joint is going to flex. Now, there are times when you're not going to want to use that, but I recommend that, that you leave that for later, because there are more advanced techniques. Uh, but for now, this is a good way to handle the idea. Uh, but you can see that this is above and below the fulcrum at different distances. If we wanted to have a real clean compression, we would try and make it uh, as close to symmetrical as we could, because that way when we bend the joint, they would compress at exactly the same rate, and then they touch. See? So there's no longer any of that little skew problem we had earlier. Now, whether or not this is the best way to make a joint is up for some debate, but the basic idea is you're going to need faces that change their size, and you're going to want the size to change gracefully. Uh, now that means that some faces are going to get larger, and some faces are going to get smaller, and you need to make sure that those faces don't get larger or smaller in a way that looks awful. It's that simple. There is one more technique, and this is the technique you would use if you don't have any more verts, if you, don't, if you can't, cannot spare even a single vert. Uh, I'll go ahead and teach you this trick. Sorry, I've got to reattach all these real quick, so let's just, uh... Oh, I deleted some... Oh, I, I just delete only the faces, please. Why are those two verts vanishing, even when I only delete fa- Oh, there we are. No? Hmm, that's interesting. Whatever, we'll do it manually. It's kind of a pain in the ass to do manually. Whatever. Sorry, everything goes a little bit awkwardly. Nothing ever goes just perfectly. Ooh, try that again. Try that again. So you've got a leg, just like we had at the very beginning, and you want it to bend gracefully, but you don't want to add any more verts. Not a single face. Super, super low poly. Say the end of a fingertip, something like that. The answer is to put the joints, the, put the verts where they are when the leg is at its most bent, or the joint is at its most bent, and then attach it to the upper, upper bone. So let's go ahead and move this up to like this. Now that's where the joint, where, that's where we want the joint to be when the leg is 90 degrees bent. That's where we want those verts to be when the leg is 90 degrees bent, or you know, 80 degrees or whatever is normal. But you can see that it folds inward. Well, the way to fix that as I mentioned, you need to attach it to the other joint, the other, sorry, the other bone. So here we can see it's kind of attached, it's around uh, yellow. Let's go ahead and make this a 0.85, that's about the right weight, and then we'll just really attach it like that. And because now that is not attached to the lower bone, you know, barely attached at all, this down here will do all of the moving when we move the lower bone.
See? And that's a good way to create ultra low poly joints. It's not recommended if you have the spare, uh, if you have a couple of spare faces though, because in this case, these faces here, this one, this one, and this one, are going to really compress. And that's going to be really obvious if you're using textures. They're going to really skew quite a lot. Um, but, you know, that may be what you need. So I thought I'd mention it. That's my basic introduction to bones. There are a lot more things to teach when it comes to joints. Um, that's my basic introduction to joints, even. And there's a lot more things to teach when it comes to joints, but that will suffice. Uh, maybe I'll cover others later. But that should get you going. As long as you understand how joints work, you shouldn't have any uh, issue with creating joints for your characters.